hardest one from the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are. Yeah. Oh, you sure. You could thing. you could climb under the table. That's true. There's actually a big space. Don't bite go around me. Uh, yeah. Hard, but. but anyway, we're now live for session forty-five. Hi. Of Hello. Rise of the Room Lords, we're close to the fiftieth. So close. So Ooh, are, are we going to have like a special fiftieth anniversary <laughs> kind of thing, or? Maybe, I'll think on it. <laughs> yeah, we got Are five think? weeks. Ooh, Did I hear free food and drinks? Yes. Dude, they're <laughs> always free. Like, <laughs> and yeah, so why would I deny a 50th uh, anniversary? <laughs> so yeah, we're all here minus Kurt, our slayer, but school takes priority. Yes. Joe's here. Joe, can you still hear us? Yes. All right, awesome. And, yeah, you guys just finished defeating Muck Morin. You were introduced to the voice of Karzog as he insulted all of you and said, pretty much, your world is doom. Have a nice day. I'm going to kill you all. And we did none of that series. No. <laughs> yeah. Very smart. <laughs> well, at least you didn't treat it like Power Rangers treats their villains. <laughs> oh? Well, <laughs> well they're later <laughs> villains. Gotcha. You may have copper wire and to redirect your fear, but I've got nerves of steel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought it was balls of steel. Oh, no. Different franchise. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you got a whole bunch of loot. Menendez had a nerdgasm for getting a spell book that had all of the spells in it. <laughs> up to six level. And as you can cast, so. True. There you go. And now we're... And you guys also found a key to the large golden double doors that was back the way you came from. I want to put the key in. I want to put it in. Can you even lift that thing? It's real tiny. It goes, it goes to a magical wall. For, for being <laughs> such a huge-ass pair of double doors, the key is about the size of a normal house key. Yes, huge ass pair of double doors. So it, it, it looks like an ass? When you read its yes. classification in the book, it says huge ass, undersized. Here's the thing <laughs> the doors not only look like an ass, but you're putting a star shaped key into the middle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to put it in! Show it in its ass. Keyhole. <laughs> So Theodora flies up and puts the key in. And takes it out and puts it in and takes it out and puts it in and wiggles it a little bit. Oh, you gotta turn it forward. And straps it to her waist. Oh my god. Don't do that. No, she does it so she doesn't lose it. Yeah. Strap. There, it's open. So. Numerous glowing crystal lanterns hang on fine chains from a domed ceiling 60 feet above, filling this circular room with bright light. The walls of the room are carved with more runes and sigils, while overstuffed wood and leather chairs and polished oak tables surround a 30-foot-wide shaft in the floor. When you all step into this room, there's a few things that you notice. First of all, if... Either of your characters had an inkling of hunger or thirst about them. It is suddenly gone. You feel as if you're perfectly hydrated and perfectly nourished. Second, with how decrepit, old, and aged everything outside of this room looks, this room looks pristine condition. There is no dust. There is no sign of the thousands upon thousands of years. The books and the book ends that you see on the shelves are crisp and perfect, no tears whatsoever. And all the scrolls that you see lying about the tables still look like they had just been made and rolled up. Oh, wow. But basically, Menedez, you don't need an arcane roll. You realize that there is a powerful spell on this room that keeps inanimate objects from aging. Oh, you also notice that, yes, in the 
the center of the room and along the walls is just wall to wall, floor to ceiling, books and rolled up parchments. And if you happen to glance at them, they're written in. You're gonna to have to help me pronounce this. Fazalonian, Tazalonian. Fazalonian. Yeah, they're all written in that. Why is anything ever written in English? <laughs> English is a universal language. Because well, they don't have English, they have tell and common, whatever it is. Common tongue. You also notice as you walk inside, you hear what sounds like. Um, you hear what sounds like gears moving. And from around the circular monument, you see this thing start walking towards you all. Oh, great, that's great. And more things to kill. So I totally draw my sword. I feel like it might be friendly, though. Like a librarian. Yeah, but I wouldn't know that. It has is, it, is it gold? It looks shiny. Yeah. C can I keep it? <laughs> I don't see it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you don't get to see it. <laughs> no, I mean, on the map. Oh, because I didn't put a figure on the map for it. Since it's not supposed to be... So what? <laughs> yeah, I want to kill it. So Menendez, could you check to see if if we will still get more tired and hungry, even if we don't feel it in this room? Uh, you know that they won't. You'll still. Menendez, you pretty much know that the way the spell works, inanimate and dead objects will never age, but living creatures will still age away. But I don't want to like walk out of here and then instantly <laughs> crumble on Die. the floor because of hunger and sleep deprivation. Well, I mean, you think you're gonna be if here enough a while? if enough time for that passes. I mean, yes. we're not feeling any effects, so we may end up being in here a lot longer than we expect. So. That is true. Now the basically what? this thing basically this thing Oh, uh, oh we we lost Jim. Okay. Ah. Oh no. That makes sense. Oh. <laughs> wow, that's not good. Do I have I do not have conjure um, food and water. Oh man, that's a useful spell. Solve the world under with that alone. Yeah, pretty much. Let me close this call real quick. Now you're probably going to have to call me again. I don't have Joe's thing. I know. Uh, I'm just uh, going to... I wish I had Joe's thing. Just ask him for it. Um, okay, there we go. Okay, um, he's back. So much for the Joe. Oh, sure. And then mute your mic. Uh, all right, all right, right. There we go. Hopefully okay. you kept it, uh, the mic. Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, no! Shiitake. Okay, and then just minimize your Skype real quick. Uh, Would you rate this call favorable or excellent? Or how? Uh, well, you have to turn your webcam on in order to see or yeah. accept his video. I okay, to accept. So yeah, we were still recording that whole time. Because Good. Will was asking you how the spell worked in terms of hunger and thirst, and I pretty much explained to him that if you stay in the room long enough, that dehydration or malnourishment would would normally start to take place, and then suddenly step out, then yeah, you would instantly feel it happen. Just like, pretty much think of this as the hollow deck on Star Trek. If you grab any of the books or scrolls off the walls and tables and toss them out of the door's perimeter, they will instantly crumble to dust as if 10,000 years passed within an instant. Aw, oh, man. That's why you said we're not going to get it. But yeah, the, so yeah. So just for fun, let's get an arcane roll. Alright. So, the clockwork... So yeah, so yeah, you know all about it. I'll do it. Yeah. I used to oh, and the oh, and the air in the room 
is completely perfect as well. It's not dank, it's not musky, it's not as you think it would be when you're in an underground area. It's as if you're standing out in the open. So, perfectly breathable, clean air. And you've got this clockwork being. When it moves, it sounds like clock gears going back and forth. Yeah. Is it orange? It's golden color. So, kind of, so it's sort of a clockwork orange. Uh, <laughs> you lose 50 experience points. Yeah, lose 50 HP. It is limping towards you, and it looks like it had seen better days. Parts of it is rusted out. Parts of it are barely moving as fluidly as it should. It comes up to all of you, and it starts speaking in Fazalonian. I'm freaking out at this point. Does it say any Christmas? Mendez understands Thessalonian. Okay, so here's what it says. It says... Welcome to the Grand Library. Which volume of lore would you like me to retrieve for you? There are currently 24,491 volumes, scrolls, pamphlets, and unbound manuscripts available. Please, please indicate your wish by author, title, subject, or date of acquisition by the monastery. And then he just stands there. So it's not going to attack us. Menendez uh, looks a little stunned at the moment and then says... Menendez uh, understood exactly what it's saying. You all heard pretty much gibberish. <laughs> and he translates, tells them what it said. And says, uh, perhaps uh, we could have some volumes on uh, Carousel. Yes, we have many volumes on Karzog. One moment, and it starts to huddle over to the stacks of books. As it's leaving, Theodora yells after him, What about sex positions? It doesn't understand what she said. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, yeah, some <laughs> great librarian. Can't speak. <laughs> Can't speak dragon. Can't speak common. Hey, Minidus, translate for me. I want a book on sex. Positions. Sadly, okay. with sadly uh, with twenty four plus thousand <laughs> things of texts, I'm sure they're in there. Just like just like the internet, there's more stuff on sex positions than there is on like common economics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it grabs a few stacks of books and it slowly works its way back over and sets them on the table beside you and asks, will there be anything else? <clears throat> uh, perhaps, uh, ancient Thessalon? Hmm, be more specific, there are many, many, many volumes. Uh, uh the capital of it is Zinchilas. Yes, one moment, and it starts making its way around the room again. And then it slowly comes back a few moments later and sets a couple more thicker books down. Uh, do you have any volumes on sex positions? <laughs> <laughs> For the, oh my God. That was you ask that. For the record, Joe, when you asked the other two questions, we didn't see your the picture pop up. <laughs> That's the only time we saw your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> please, please define by race. Oh, no. All of them. Oh no. <laughs> or actually, no. One moment. And it walks over with the book of erotic fantasy. Oh, God. Why is this in here? <laughs> How old is this library? This is the only the volume on text. sex. <laughs> huh? The ancient text. <laughs> yeah, how, if we take this out of the room, nothing will change. Depending <laughs> <laughs> how long the book is in here, it might just So, I, no, it's new. Menendez, I guess you want to make history checks on Zin Shalas and Karzog? Yes. Uh, so, my bonus was what? 
you pretty much get a, let's see, research in the ancient past. Uh, using the library and research grants a plus 20. Furthermore, recruiting the aid of the librarian is an additional plus 10, so 30 altogether. Hey, read this book for us. Perfect. Okay, uh, so here's the rule for Kozog. By the way, your sword, no, having also heard what this room is, is pretty much going ballistic in your head. Like, do you realize how much gold we can get for this shit? Tell us, no, you dummy. If yes. you take everything out, you yes. can All right, so what, what, which one did you want to roll for first with that 65? That was for Karzog. Oh, Karzog? Right. Okay. <laughs> and then for Zinch last. There we go. All right, so everything. Yeah. <laughs> everything. Of course. All right. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Here's a little bit of light reading for you. Karzog was the rune lord of greed. While he was himself... A human, he was a powerful man indeed, said to be the most gifted manipulator of transmutation magic in all of the Empire, and to have lived for hundreds of years. He ruled a region called Shalas, part of the ancient Empire, for over 10,000 years. His armies were, compo were comprised of primarily giants who followed his every command, the giants were ruled by towering monsters known as Groom Giants, who were themselves the Rune Lord's pawns. He counted other powerful creatures as his allies as well, such as blue dragons, eerie denizens from the nightmare realm of Lang, blood-drinking outsiders known as Scarlet Walkers, and immense Lama. Cardans, who towered over most of the giants. Let's see. Karzog focused his magic on the school of transmutation, magic associated in the Empire's times with the virtue of wealth. Under his reign, though, the virtue of rule became more associated with the sin of greed. Among the rune lords, his magistry of greed magic was uncontested, yet in the schools of illusion and enchantment... Huh? Greed magic. Yeah. <laughs> Yet in the schools of illusion and enchantment related to the sins of pride and lust, his skills had atrophied greatly. Many believe that weapons infused with illusion and enchanted magic known as dominant weapons would be particularly potent against Karzog. Yet no record of someone attacking the Rune Lord with such a weapon exists within the library. He has warred with his neighbors, but none more so than Alasness, the Rune Lord of Wrath, and ruler of Bak Rakhan. <laughs> Between their nations, along a ridge known as the Ras, Karzog built an immense sentinel statues to watch over the area, while Alasness built towers called Hellfire Flumes to prevent Karzog's armies from invading. Citizens of both nations worried that the war between Karzog and Alzes would soon escalate to the point where they could bring about the end of the world. And there are some rough sketches within the scrolls that show that the towering sentinels, their heads kind of look like what Thristletop stands on top of. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. As Karzog and Alasis war intensified, and as wars between other Rune Lords threatened more than just their armies, the Rune Lords devised methods in which they could escape the world and enter a state of suspended animation so they could ride out the Cataclysm. In theory, their surviving minions would then awaken them to reclaim their empires once the Cataclysm has ended. So that's everything that Menendez says about Karzog. Reactions. So they knew about this cataclysm and did nothing to stop it. Why would they? They seem like power-hungry morons. Okay. <laughs> Zen Shalas. <laughs> Nothing from the Cleric of Justice. <laughs> he's... he's tired. He's kind of upset. He fell asleep. <laughs> Zinchalost is a 
legendary lost city rumored to be hidden somewhere in the Kodar Mountains. Stories hold that Zin Shalas has gold. Uh, what? Zenshalas was the capital city of the empire called Shalas, one of seven that composed of the ancient empire of Fasalan. Legend holds that Zenshalas lay at the headwaters of the sacred river Va, which Barasian folklore says leads to an earthly paradise sacred to Desna. Desna being the main goddess that the people of Sandpoint follow. Unfortunately, no record of where this river may have once flowed exists today, and most scholars believe the river itself to have been destroyed during Earthfall. In the final centuries before Earthfall ended Thassalon, Jinsalas was ruled by Karzog, one of the lords of the empire. Primary architects of the immense city were tribes of giants, themselves ruled by powerful beings known as rune giants, you know that part. The spears of Jinsalas stand upon the mythical mountain of Mar Masif. This mountain of legendary proportions pierces the skies above the Kodar Mountains and is said to be the highest peak in the entire range. Let's see, it's also said to serve as a bridge to strange well realms below. Bridge to strange realms beyond Galoran, which is the world this game takes place in. <clears throat> Notably to the nightmare dimension of Lang. The connections with the nightmare realm of Lang were said to have infused the region around the peak with dangerous, eldritch, and otherworldly energies. And that's all that you learn. Uh, anything about... Uh, Mendez asks the librarian if there's anything on Ling. Nothing at, nothing <clears throat> that has been reported. Is all this stuff on the Jaggy Coast? Let me go ahead and pull up coast, the, yeah. let me pull up the world map for you real quick. Yeah. How, like, how close are we to the Eldritch Horrors? <laughs> <laughs> One sec, I gotta scroll through all these maps. The... Yeah, I just wanna know what's going on in the adventure. Right on! Okay. Can you go to the map? Yeah. Yeah. Sandpoint, that's where the game started. Uh, yeah. 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 Sandpoint, that's where the game started. Magnamar, that's where Stanton comes from, and it is a large metropolitan city, almost the size of Boston. You guys are in this area, the Iron Peaks. Uh, that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. That's also where Crump was born. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Will, if you move the Crump square... Crump is from side. Star Wars Plateau. Oh, he's from Star Wars Plateau. Oh. Okay. We're really neighbors! Like hmm? What, Joe? We're at the Star Wars Plateau, so... Okay. Oh, that's where I was born. <laughs> Maybe the you're related. The crudely drawn maps that were brought along by the clockwork creature shows that Zin Shalas is all the way up here. Oh, oh, all of 60 feet away. <laughs> <laughs> well, 60 feet plus whatever it says on the scale down there. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, 60 giant feet. <laughs> Good thing I have pretty big feet, so it's 10 and a half if you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, 400 miles away from your current location. And that's, just, and that's like, going straight there. That's not accounting for a bunch of crap in the way. Like the mountains and whatnot. And the fact that Zin, Zin Shalas in its heyday was seated in... <laughs> those mountains. Uh, we and now you're talking about 10,000 years worth of time doing its job. Uh, you can just take the river. <laughs> just just paint Navi. Yeah. Take you up that way. <laughs> awesome. I can't swim. Oh, I can't swim. So I hope we wouldn't be swimming the whole way there. I, I don't know about you guys, but I could definitely become a giant squid, and that'd be nice. That'd be true. You want us to ride on you as a giant squid? Oh. You'd be halfway underwater? Oh, then I'd, then I'd probably be a giant turtle. I yeah, that'd be, be a better idea. Out. Yeah. Or we could just get a boat. Yeah, that's also a possibility. <laughs> I forgot about that. Because it's a boat. Come on a boat. So, just to just to connect a certain paradox, the room lord of wrath that Karzlog was fighting was the one who built the hellfire flumes, and one of those hellfire flumes is now half of its size and being called a, a lookout tower in Sandpoint. We should probably warn them and maybe get everyone away from there. Uh, they've been there for a while now. I don't know if it's going to, you know, all of a sudden be a bad thing. Well, but wasn't he trying to reactivate it with, with his one rock? <laughs> well, he did. True. Are there any other guys that want to steal rocks from Sandpoint? session to do some character development role play, or just wait until you're in the city to do so, just let me know and I'll allow it. Basically, I want this whole night to be not only role play, but character development, especially for the newer characters. Oh, oh, can we have a campfire session in here? We can burn the books! Oh, that'd be a bad idea. Well, probably a bad idea. So, it's a good thing the librarian doesn't understand what the universe is. <laughs> Actually, you he may... No. Normally I approve of my RCR, but not. Oh, can you repeat that? Normally I would approve of fire, but here I would not. Can oh. you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can. Okay. Okay. Pretty much talk amongst yourselves while I find a way to plug my computer in before it dies on me. Ah, uh, uh, probably behind the TV, but I don't know if all of those are in through the TV. So, who's gonna take? Are we just we have to leave all this stuff in here. We can't take the library with us. There's one here. Are we just gonna leave yeah. it alone? Should we tell someone about this? Yeah, one of those portable scanners. Just report this to the Fungus Society as soon as we return to that point. Uh, okay. you have just a report it to Memory Alpha. <laughs> We can always come back later if we need to figure something out. Unless it'll be closed forever. Do, do you guys have like a surge protector? Or... It isn't in use. No, that's a gamble. 
Roll the dice. It's a good thing there's no storm. Um. Are you afraid you're plugging in too many things? No, it's, it's behind and we have to pull it out and I don't know if everything is already plugged in or not. Sean, so I typically like you on your knees this close to me. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can move move that out of the way and looks like there's the very tail end of yeah. something down here. I'll be right back. So alright. Okay. Keep Sorry. recording. Wait, we're gonna keep recording this? I'll I'll edit it out. Alright. <laughs> I'll know where to look for it. No, no, make a bunch of noise so it sounds really interesting. <laughs> oh my gosh, be careful! It's about to fall. Good. That strip looks full. Yeah. Drill um, a hole. No one's using the Xbox. Right yeah, unplug the Xbox. I don't sure. know which one is the Xbox. Now we'll just keep pulling cords. Yeah. If there's braided cords, oh no, that would be the input. Um. If it's light gray, it's usually the Xbox, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> We'll find out. I can't see. Probably. I can't see. Oh, it's all for the oh. You don't want to accidentally pull something. Oh. Like that. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. I think All the time. I think it's that one. Put on your butts. Okay. Nothing popped up. All right. Look at her. Um, is your light on a timer, Chapin? Yeah. Okay. I was going to say it turned off. <laughs> We'll make a note of that. Yeah, I'll... Okay, I should have it set up. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm trying to back out from under this webcam cord. While I'm up, anyone else want any drinks or anything? Me. I'll take your Coke. I want another Elliot. Okay, Elliot Coke. Yeah, I'll definitely... <laughs> okay. I'm a slow oh, drinker, I'm sorry. Yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> I'll definitely work my way through this recording and edit out this whole part. <laughs> I almost completely forgot that my computer was on nothing but battery power. Oh, is that a little ring, uh, the plateau? You see how circular it is? You can make a circle of that whole area. Is that intentional? Okay, which one? Which one are we talking about? Thank you. Um, in the Varian. Varician salt. Do you see how you can make a circle? Like with the plateau? Huh. More. Why? Oh, so I right. see that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's intentional. Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> I like to look at maps. It's interesting. It kind of makes a little heart shape with the mountains <laughs> and the plateau. Yeah. It comes down to the little yeah. point. It's pretty. So, I guess I could explain a bit about the world. You said you want to be from the Iron Peaks. The Iron Peaks is mostly home to giants. And giants are not necessarily evil and attack on sight creatures. They're considered neutral. But it's actually referring more to the fact that her character was imprisoned there. And like right out of character creation, she ended up yeah. in the dungeon. Technically, I was born there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think my parents put me out there. Yeah. Like, sold you in, sold you to the dwarves, and yeah. then they got captured. Yes. Yeah. That was exactly what happened. <laughs> no. Her father was a very loving person who spent a lot of time and energy making her the best that he could. He sold me to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So, her mom, unbeknownst to her dad, sold her to the dwarves, who then got captured. So <laughs> actually, it's just a reference to the fact that because I made her, I'm technically her parent. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> Joe, jo, you were still recording, right? Yes. Alright, I'm pretty much going to go Bobby through and edit audience. all that span out. But anyway, now that Joe's back on... Yeah, you all were discussing amongst yourselves what to do in the library? Not really, but Menendez yeah. asks Lucy for some tea. 
Oh, I, I can make tea. Lucy, is there, like, a stove or anything? In a library? In a library? Like, yeah, break rooms? It's <laughs> just staring at you because it can't understand what you're saying. <laughs> um, Minutus, can, can you can you translate for me, M- maybe? Minutus translates. There's mm. probably knock about us there. They say yes. <laughs> <laughs> No. Oh. I missed something. No, there is no, there is no stone. There is no. Wait, are we muted button. or is he muted? I think it's the spells. Oh, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. okay. There's something you know. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can also hear dogs. Okay. Right, yes, my parents are home. So anyway, it says no, there is no stove of any kind to cook tea. Oh, oh then I I guess I'll need a fire or something. Um, I don't think starting a fire in a library is a good idea. Yeah, maybe. I, there, was, there, there was some stuff, like cloth and such, in the other room. I'll, I'll, I'll go make some tea. I can do that. Where's the pisser? <laughs> yeah, anywhere you want, just walk out. <laughs> Pretty <Yeah>. much. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, just because we're living in medieval times doesn't mean we're fucking savages. It's the enemy stronghold. Just do whatever. <laughs> All right. So Lucy goes, starts a fire, starts boiling water for tea. All right. Or I get well. So, it looks like we have Will's uh, microphone recording as well now. We, we do? Because I've muted myself. Yeah. Will is muted, so you weren't hearing us from two different things. So, it was just some echo for a minute. So, now that Lucy's making tea, what's everyone else doing? I'm going to look for books on dragons. Haven't we been running through this like whole dungeon system for like like ten hours straight, something like that? All right, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get some sleep. All right. <laughs> Speaking of, Theodora is in the middle of reading about sex positions and then just passes out. She would. She wouldn't really be able to read it so much as just stare at the crude drawings. <laughs> exactly. Again, none of these books in here are written in common. <laughs> Or el- they're all written in the ancient empire's single language. I'm just gonna look through books then, throw them aside. <laughs> Every time you toss one, the librarian picks it up and puts it back in its place. Good. <laughs> Navi just finds a big pile of scrolls and just kind of lays on it and falls asleep. Nice. Yeah. It's comfortable. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So, uh, is Theodora reading a book of Dirty Than Rex to Stan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then she lifted her leg, and it was awesome. <laughs> uh, maybe it's a sleep deprivation. Well, that's pretty fun. <laughs> get some sleep. Lucy makes her tea for Menendez, and what's Menendez been up to? Uh, studying. Is it okay for us to sleep in here? Uh, if Theodora wants, she can make an attempt. Yes! Yes! An attempt at what? Is it still on him? Uh, is it still on you? He probably. Uh, Menendez has removed his gears as much as he can, just sitting at the table. So now the shiny shirt is not on. Yules! <laughs> she wants the shirt. <laughs> I forgot you wanted to steal the shirt. Oh, oh yeah! Theodora it's... cracks her eye open and then creeps over. Oh no. Where's D20? Here's D20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, slide of hand is dexterity, I believe. 
<laughs> so roll her dexterity modifier. Do I have slide of pan? I don't think I have slide of pan for her. No, so so dex modifier. Okay. Yeah. 19 plus 4. Ooh. Uh, Mendez, since you're studying, you get a negative 4 to your perception roll. Uh, and she rolled a what? Uh, 23. 23. Then I'm not going to be able to meet it. Uh oh. So Theodore snatches she it. She succeeds. <laughs> she goes running <laughs> <laughs> with the shirt in her hand. Leave the library. <laughs> she goes running. <laughs> you just suddenly see the streak of dragon just out the door. And a shimmering shirt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. Probably. Knocking over several piles of books and making a big <laughs> clatter in the process. So at some point, Menendez, you'll notice that your shining shirt is missing. Okay. <laughs> is that going to be resolved in any way, or is he letting it go? <laughs> he probably wouldn't notice for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright, anybody doing anything else, or should we move this to... Back to the surface world. Lu Lucy asks about um, like pacifist manifestos. Right. does translate and the and the clockwork librarian goes around and grabs some scroll, rolled up scrolls, brings them over and explains that they are parchments from Basically, this world's equivalent of Buddhist monks. Okay. She. But he she, would have to help you read them. <laughs> she also asks for a uh, a a, a, a trans a book dictionary from Common to Thessalonian. It doesn't understand Common. <laughs> it wouldn't help. It's been ten thousand years. The language has changed too much. Is there anything else in this library? Like like any trinkets? Is there anything on the tables? Anything? This is there is nothing but books, scrolls, and parchments. I think she has the ability to have understand comprehend language. She should. Yeah. And we can't take anything out with us. So she can cast comprehend languages on herself. Yeah, she does yeah. that and All then right, so, so yeah, you're able to read it. <laughs> she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? I'm going to look at this Met Golem clockwork. Thing. Let me check it out. Um, You're Buster. a fighter, so you can actually roll an engineering. I don't think I have any engineering, but I can roll it. Is that a skill? Knowledge engineering. I wouldn't have any, but I'll do it anyway. Fighter, fighters actually have... Specification and knowledge engineering and knowledge engineering. It's kind of weird. But sure. It is a bit weird, but I guess somebody has to have it. I'll be the fighter. Got an eighteen. All right, you. You pretty much, know, You can pretty much know from Menendez explaining to you that this thing is a construct, which means by all rights it's a living being. Huh. So, it's actually susceptible to age. The spell in the room isn't protecting it and its inner workings. With your engineering role, you know that it has seen better days, and it has also basically attempted to keep itself going through self-repair. So, if we took it out of the room, it wouldn't just turn to dust. Then. No, this thing has aged yeah. 10,000 years. Holy crap. It has kept itself working as best as it could these 10,000 years, considering there has been no one else in the immediate area to maintain <clears> him. <throat> Did it used to have a small white and blue uh, counterpart that it took apart? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so is it was it magically created? Yeah, constructs are created through magic and they are given the spark of life. It's magically delicious. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say it, but I, yeah. I'm 
And it came from <laughs> the what kingdom did you say? The Thessalonian. Thessalonian, yeah. That was all in character, by the way. I totally know what this is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> it's my first day in fans. It pretty much it pretty much works like a walking talking clock. That means that it's always like five minutes past. Precisely. Uh, Joe, are you still there? Yep. Okay, we just lost your video for whatever reason. Menendez, do you think you can make one of these things? Uh, no. I have, I have no skill. Well, it's pretty interesting. I never read entirely into the construct creation rules, but I know they take a lot. Oh, of course. They're not really something a player is meant to do easily. What, Joe? Hello? Uh, Joe, I think we just lost you. And, uh... Let's go ahead and move this back up to the surface. Yes. 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 All right. Well, well. Before we do, should it should it we like bring him parts or something so he can repair himself a little better, or or at least you know find someone who, who would. Because you can go get some clockwork mech parts. Just go down to the store. They got them. The parts might be uh, out of commission, considering it's been ten thousand years. Well. Yeah, but well, we can always find if we parts tell, it, yeah, yeah, or find some like Minnet has said, if we tell yeah. the Pathfinder Society, I'm sure someone will do something. Uh, okay, then, okay, then, the, yes. then we can do that. Yeah, the society. Uh, he said the society will be sure to take care of them. Good. All right, so when so you all can't see me. No, no, the camera is not up. It. We just see your picture when you talk. <laughs> it's a very sexy picture. But... Which, I mean, well, it's just like you, but without your mouth moving. So, you know, it's yeah. kind of the same thing. <laughs> so, anyway, when you all make your way back up to the surface, first of all, you know, when you make your way back to the caves, you realize that they've been completely emptied. So, everyone when, left? Yeah. When you go above the caves into Jorgenfist Fortress, also completely empty. Like, everyone just dropped everything and left. So were they all being, like, enthralled by Mugmorin? Pretty much, according to what the one woman stone giant told you. She pretty much explained that when... You know, these are tribal creatures, so when you come and kill their tribal leader, you're suddenly tribal leader. And when your tribal leader says, hey, we're going to mass for war, hey, we're going to mass for war. When said tribal leader is slain and the next person in line says, hey, this is all stupid, let's just go home. <laughs> they're going like, okay, let's all go home. No, that'll work. So she kept her in the bargain. The giants are no longer a threat to the lowland areas, and they have left the fortress entirely. If we killed Morin, technically, doesn't that mean? Nope. Don't say it. You do not. 
You did not appear fast enough to take the glory, therefore her being next in line took over the tribes and returned them back to their home areas. Oh no, that's not what he was going to say. I know exactly what he was going to say. He was going to say, technically, that makes us the leader of the tribes. I was going to say... say we might be giants again. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, I was going to ask if we could write it off. (laughs) <laughs> Public service. Sure, why not? The, the Church of Abaddon thanks you for your contribution. Would you, like to, would you like to donate a copper to the helpless orphans? What the orphans ever Screw the orphans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you thinking? Would I you donated like, at the office. Would you like to donate two silver to your political party? Yes, of course. (laughs) 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 That's horrible. (laughs) Okay, so, um, Joe, did you ever look, well, yeah, you did look up that message again, did you, that went to Corbin? Yes. Um, Will, do you remember the message that would be flown out to Stanton? Uh, yes. I I remember the gist of it. Do you want... Do you want to read it out loud to everybody? Or are you just going to stand there reading it like, uh-oh? <laughs> secretive asshole. I'm going to read it like a secretive asshole. What you reading, hey. Ken? Hey, what are you reading? Yeah. Hey! By the way, she has this shirt on. <laughs> and, and, like, under any armor she has, and, and she's acting like this is completely normal. <laughs> Ninja Desk now notices. He's noticed. He just shakes his head and moves on. Really? (laughs) So basically, a raven flies down to Stanton, landing on his shoulder, drops a rolled up letter in his hand, and then flies away. Oh, oh. Is that for you? Thank you. I gave you all a sexier picture to look at. (laughs) Nice. I like the head tilt. It's, it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to read it again yourself, you just uh, lean your head around. I mean, pretty much it just says, hey, get back here. Yeah. That's it. So are we well, outside right now? Why are we, yeah, why are we getting okay, back? Okay, I'm pretty much blinded by the sun because my so eyes are not used to any kind of light. You're blinded by the light. <laughs> on in, like a deuce. In the, in the middle, middle of the night. Except it's daytime. So, uh, yeah, you're wrong. It's nighttime somewhere. That's <laughs> true. But yeah, I'm like, I can't see right now, so I might just have to get used to it. Do, so. do you need a, a hat or anything? I need a shoulder to hold on to. Buy yourself oh, okay. a shoulder to lean on. on. Here, here, you can lean on you. you. Can, yeah. <laughs> lean she also on puts a hat on your head. <laughs> To, with, a, with a big brim, that would be perfect because I can't see this shit right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's always tough transitioning from caves, yeah. especially living in there. Like, how old am I? Sixteen. I don't know how many years it's been, but you're like what? Four weeks old now. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Okay. And Sixteen is dog years, right? Yeah. <laughs> As I promised, more for Lucy talking. I'm 16 years old. For the four week old Jim. Have have you have you known anyone other other than the dwarves? No, they raised me. They're all my mothers and fathers, except they were all my fathers. (laughs) Except they're all men. There are no female dwarves. So Malby has two daddies. Huh. (laughs) <laughs> my two dads. <laughs> so, so I felt like I was alone because I didn't grow a beard. Like I should have until they told me I wasn't actually a dwarf. Oh, yeah. So female dwarves do have beards. They do. They do. Oh. That would explain why. But there are still no female so dwarves with us. Yeah. They kind of, they kind of, they kind of killed them all. Oh. So they've been reproduced or something. And, one of those things. Yeah. 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 How long has this little hill giant excursion been going on? <laughs> oh, longer than you know. <laughs> it's like the hillside mafia or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so glad we came through. If you have any questions, please 
feel free to ask. Whatever they are. I will. How do you read? Hmm? How do you read? <laughs> well, once oh, your God. eyes adjust, it, it gets a little easier. You can see the figures a little better. But do you not know how to read? I never learned how to read when I'm just like helping a villa to keep the fires going. Oh. So. Oh, and Lu <laughs> Lucy immediately takes out some books and pencils and starts, like, teaching her how to read <laughs> and write. Navi is so happy. <laughs> Navi pretty much lived out the beginning of Schwarzenegger's Conan the Barbarian, only her job was bellowing a fire and not, not turning in a circle a for whatever reason. <laughs> Is it even like like a mill or anything? Or was it just I have no idea <laughs> what that was. <laughs> there was absolutely nothing coming from just it. Just a wheel of torture. Bobby, <laughs> <laughs> what is best in life? <laughs> 34. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. 34 is best in life. <laughs> start leading the party back to the same point. Alright, boss. I mean, because you got an angry girlfriend letter. Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. On the way back, does anybody want to do anything else? Or should we just skip ahead to the same point? Get into a bar fight! Oh, we can't do that in the middle of the woods. I mean, if it's just me and Theodora drinking, we could do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, could just, we could just build, like, a little tiki bar and then just start fighting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Theodora is also teaching you how to read by 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 showing you, like, the curse words, definitely, and bar menus. Nice. Oh, so you know, like, the, like, the, like the... Blushing Bride. Like that one. Mm -hmm. Like smutty erotic fiction. <laughs> that too. Have you, ever, have you ever seen yeah. I Robot? No, I haven't. No. Oh, wait, yeah, I have. Wait. When, when, yeah, Shia, I have. when Shia LaBeouf says common curse word phrases wrong, wrong, you know, he'll be like, uh, instead of saying motherfucker, he'll be like holy fucker or something like that. <laughs> or mother shit, man, she just shot at you. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta play it off like that. <laughs> I will. Oh my gosh, I will. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, where did Theodora have all these books about curse words? The same place I keep all the weapons. Oh, and to also answer a question from last week, when you all asked me what's the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 bag of holding, it turns out that bag of holdings actually do have a weight and volume limit to them. And a type 2 bag of holding can hold, like, up to 700 pounds worth of items, or up to however many cubic feet worth of items. But yeah. And it goes all the way up to a type 4, which holds, like, 1,500 pounds worth of items. On her iPad. She totally has an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> She's just gonna browse through Pornhub real quick. Hold on a second. Really? A dragon should have a Kindle. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I guess that's better. Oh, that. uh, <laughs> I like that. It's oh, a horrible fire. pun, but I'm going to award it. <laughs> it is, oh. I, I can just see Wolf now when that comes up just going, oh. <laughs> Anyway, so, it takes, so. huh? So. It takes, I said so, I said so. Okay, it takes, <laughs> okay. it takes about a week journey to go back to Sam Point. And does, uh, does Lucy want to split off when you're close enough to Thristletop or go back to the city first? Yeah, she, she goes to Thristletop, um, to, to, to see her, to see Kronk. Does she and give Crunk the giant sword? She yes, does? as a gift. She wraps she wraps a nice bow around it. And um, wait, where'd you get that sword? 
Georgia gets a bow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's like, here, you hold this fire, and you're, 
you're good at fanning. Yeah. So make lots of smoke. Okay. And and I'll get there and I'll be in the shadow. It's gonna be perfect. Perfect. Yeah. You remember Mulan when Mushu first comes to her? Yeah. That's exactly what Theodora does, but without the walking out and actually showing us. <laughs> yeah. She would make a like big fire just a little while and do that. I do that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, fire! So the goblins see the image appear and immediately run over and start bowing to it. <laughs> My goblins! Oh, great Theodora! It's been so long, do they even remember that they worship a god? <laughs> <laughs> but the goblins, yes. The goblins' uh, memory <coughs> like measured in minutes. They thoroughly remember like Theodora. Like a three-second like yeah, I, like She made bird. that big of an impression. They remember. They remember <laughs> They even bothered to teach the children what they didn't eat. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, what does what <laughs> Theodore say? How have my minions been? You're a god, you should know! <laughs> <laughs> I went busy! That's me! We hurt him! your Kill actions. <laughs> That goblin gets an early <laughs> bitch sucked by another goblin go, and go, Please, ignore the stupid one. <laughs> the stupid if God's truly exist, then why do bad things happen to good goblins? <laughs> because you must learn. And it's the only way to learn. Because you're stupid. <laughs> and you're <gonna> true. <laughs> I'm trying to scroll. I posted a rule list on the door. My name is Martin Lutheran. <laughs> oh, my reformed church. <laughs> that goblin immediately gets his throat slashed. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing even written. There's nothing. <laughs> it's just a picture of like a rubber duck and a log. <laughs> Yeah, look 
Okay. Sign the belief be reserved for those truly worthy of it. Glory to the master race! And <laughs> glomped and killed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go 
to Effie and Stanton as they return to town. Are we walking along the road? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, so. Okay, I'm bugging Stanton super hard. <laughs> hey, Stanton, what's this marshland thing on the map? What map? We're not holding a map. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding a map. Oh, yeah. So, Stanton, Effie, and Menadette, or is Menadette still with them? Yes. Okay, so you all go walking into Sandpoint after such a long, long journey filled with bloodshed and tears and sore feet. Yeah, that too. What yeah. does what do the three of you do once you enter the city gates? Well, I'm still bothering him. I'm I'm like edging in like over his shoulder, trying to stick his face in the map, asking what places are on it. Like what, what's this marshland? Huh? Larry came back. Yeah. Oh, because Larry is still in this town. <laughs> Didn't she hightail it out? Or did, oh, that's right. She decided to stay. Yeah. Hey, Stan, what's Magmar like? I imagine Sandpoint, but bigger, smellier, and filled with more minorities. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, if you don't mind me asking, why do you wear the mask? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it get stuffy in there? Eh. I live with it. Interesting. <laughs> it comes with a job. You should take it off. Uh, that's actually part of my religious conviction. It's like, oh, so you're not a burn victim. <laughs> Stanton's like, I mean, you don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the religious ceremony that they burn their face yeah. and then wear the masks. Did, did you know this? Did the teacher do this? Well, that's how it's know? fixed. It's like freshly burned in a... Yeah. Yeah, so like I'll if he tries to take off the mask, it's it like... He's ripping his flesh off. Yeah. 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 No, he just takes off the man's one. He just, yeah. he just takes off I'll the mask and he's just rolling around, around on the floor. <laughs> it's right there. He's the rat king. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> come on. It, it's, more, it's more like Kylo Ren. He takes the mask off and he's actually hot as hell. And that's why all the women in town flock to him. Actually, charisma doesn't necessarily translate into physical appearance. He could be horrifying as fuck. True. I know. <laughs> He's just got like a but radio has... DJ voice. <laughs> <laughs> I got into one of those. It's scary. <laughs> so what does Menendez do? Uh, Menendez suggests we head to Corbin's place and settle in there so that um, we can decide what we're going to do from here. Because since we're local heroes, heading back to the tavern might cause issues. What is Celebratory it? issues? Hey, I thought Corbin was dead. Also, you should totally introduce Effie to our dead friend. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Corbin's not dead. Oh. You yeah. Oh, like he says. <laughs> Wait, he's not dead? Wait. What? I you thought got, we already knew this. Yeah, you guys, you guys. I just like, this. I just like calling Corbin my dead friend. <laughs> this is my dead friend. So, so do you all follow Menendez? Uh, I don't, but uh, Effie, you I should totally stick, follow. Will, him. Will, I think you want to. Will, you no, definitely okay. want to. I follow. Trust him. Do it. All right. Can, you want, you want to hear his new character's introduction? All right, can I'd can like, Theodora like? Catch up while Lucy is still there and dealing with now the goblin. Oh, I'm sure. gonna use the bathroom for so I don't miss anything. Where is it anyway? It's upstairs. It? Um, it's the only room with a toilet. Yeah, uh, it's straight once Good you call. get up the stairs. Good call. Yeah. So I'll well, yeah. find it like, eventually. <laughs> there's three rooms and only one of them has a shower. Oh, look, I found it. <laughs> 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 like how how long would have it taken? Like could they have kept caught up or? I would. I was assuming that Lucy would want to stay there tonight. Well, Lucy would, yeah. but maybe oh, Theodora but... and. Oh, I'm yeah. holding on to her tail. Like I'm, yeah. st I'm still getting used to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are holding like you're holding Theodora's like your Those flaps ones. out. Like when she's vomiting. She's like, here, just hold on, right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I had 
never to do that. <laughs> I don't know better. I grew up with men. They don't have bosoms. <laughs> they told me that's what you hold on to when you need to someone to call you. <laughs>
the other guy spills Corbin in on information. Um, yes. Y'all will all continue to talk. Menendez and Corbin go off, and they talk for a couple of minutes while Menendez is, um, or while Corbin is writing down some things, hands them to Menendez. Um, Menendez bows to Corbin and walks out the door. And that's the last you see of Menendez. Well, okay. Uh, see ya! Where'd he go? Menendez has left the party. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> yes. Did we unequip all of his stuff first? Oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> we that save. Oh, no, it was eight hours ago. Aww. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs>
He says it exactly like that, too. <laughs> okay. He stares off into the distance. Yeah, that was a religion role. Stanton hears, what, <laughs> Stanton hears what you know. The goddess of righteous valor, justice, and honor. Having served as Aradin's herald, she inherited many of the last Azalani's followers upon his death and continues to honor his ideas Righteousness and defense of good and battle against evil. She is one of the very few mortals who ascended the godhood as well. So she's like Avatar, but she has more sticks up her ass. Um, <laughs> no, she's uh, she's just a uh, she was a warrior who led uh, large armies. Uh, she. Let's see, Knights well, of Orism and the Shining Crusade against the forces of the Whispering Tyrant. Okay, uh, most recent yeah, uh, person to test. You, yeah. you would know who she is because she and Abadar are allies. Um, Aradin is who she worships. Aradin is now a dead god. Um, and she basically took his place. She is of the Lawful Good Alliance. Alignments and her titles include the Inheritor, Light of the Sword, <clears throat> Lady of Valor. Yeah, so um, she's just a fanatical warrior who was uh, devoted to Aradon. Uh, he took notice of her and she was, uh, well, like she was. Uh, she did went through the test of the star stone and uh, became a god. Uh, was taken notice of and was um, Aradin's herald before he was killed, and then basically took over for him from there. So there's a lot more to it, but it's just history lesson that I'm sure y'all don't want to listen to. Uh, so Stanton's got a best friend. <laughs> So we're we're basically just we're basically just trading a lawful neutral cleric for a lawful good cleric. Basically. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so Corbin continues. Uh, we took to each other rather quickly. And uh, I was Nervous, uh, and it is actually the reason that I began taking jobs in the field. What to get away from her? Oh, I mean, everyone's nervous the first time they're with them, but you know, you get over that. Could you and, not get it up? And this is coming from the guy who was led into a basement by one woman, kept getting <laughs> flirted with by pretty much every other woman in his congregation, and is now going out with a wizard. <laughs> hey, <laughs> she's a priest, not a saint. <laughs> <laughs> there was intimacy in our relationship, yes. Okay, we don't need to hear every detail. She's not. I didn't expect her to turn up on my doorstep, however. I could get you some herbs. You know, they help with the whole, you know, up and down thing. Thank you, Theodora. That'll be, that will be plenty. Thank you. It's <laughs> red in the face again. You did it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that's a story. Awesome. So, so... How did she react when you heard you got killed by a bell? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, he got killed by a bell. What's a bell? When? <laughs> Theodora finds a bell and picks it up and rings it. I like bells. Only bigger. White. But if he got killed, how is he back? Because he had enough influence within the Pathfinder Society, enough prestige that he had arranged that 
were he to ever die, his body would be recovered and he would be revived. I didn't even know you could do something like that. Yeah. And he was sent back in society, society, under society to uh, just keep an eye on the goings on of, uh, well, this whole campaign, basically. That was all in character, by the way. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know what's going on, I'm just asking. So that's that. Uh, he mentions to you that Laren is probably was probably sent by the Pathfinder Society to, to offer her services. Oh yeah! Not those kind of services. <laughs> and she would be a very valuable asset to asset. I was waiting. <laughs> Get to that later. 
Two, as awesome as it would be to release a bunch of babies, I don't think that's what they would do. <laughs> So she speeds back around and goes, So, what are we going to do about this? Well, I'm going to operate under the assumption that you're going to need me here. Jesus. <laughs> oh, jeez. Some I would hope so. You can make freely. <laughs> the last thing I need is you dying and God knows where and me having to raise this brat by myself. Hey, he is our brat. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> She's just now it's like she just now came to the realization. <laughs> you know, there are herbs that you can use for, you know, getting rid of this problem. I already went through all that. <laughs> okay. Just just let me know. Where are these hypothetical herbs, Theodora? It's all cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one she's referring to. Well, I guess if you have enough, you can do anything. <laughs> you know how many nights I stayed up staring at those scrolls you had me help take care of, just thinking, should I keep it? Shouldn't I keep it? Should I send him a message now? Will it even reach there? Is he lying at the bottom of a gutter, dead, with a sword in his back? Gee, I thought you had a little more faith in me than that. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. It's gonna be fine. We'll find some way to make this work out, alright? You had better, because I'm racking my brain like crazy. I studied magic my whole life, and I didn't think that this would be more <laughs> stressful. Hell, I murdered three people, and this is more stressful. <laughs> Have you ever tried murdering them with channel negative energy? It feels great. <laughs> I do have lightning. See, we are going to be perfect parents. <laughs> <laughs> Our kid is going to know how to murder so many things in so different ways. It's 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 going to be mind boggling. If ever somewhere in the future, in a future adventure path, you bring along a sorcerer that has, like, a divine bloodline or anything like that. Multi-class. <laughs> well, just a sorcerer with divine bloodline would be good enough. That'd be, like, instant three hero points to start right there. <laughs> anyway. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> So, I guess you have a lot to talk about, and we have a lot to discuss. I apologize if this seemed a little sudden. I don't know the two of you. <laughs> They're really nice people. Have her her. Her. On her face like <laughs> <laughs> I see the dragon here. Where's the druid? She's getting boned! She's oh, probably... Making another little person as we speak. <laughs> At least she would seem more prepared for it than I. She can totally help you with the wedding preparations. Uh, wedding talk much, much, much later. <laughs> I mean, if you want, we can we can just be unwed couples with a kid. It makes me feel so bad. And I murdered three people. <laughs> hey, it's a new age. Anything's possible. <laughs> Are you an ordained priest? <laughs> <laughs> Is a priest you your first sure name? Are you sure <laughs> your first name? What? I clearly get to get from the College of DeVry, I think qualifies me for <laughs> celestial services. <laughs> <laughs> you got your online diploma. <laughs> yes. 
by the way, her slapping you has drawn a small crowd since everybody recognizes you all. <laughs> Hi! She got smacked. He knocked her up. Oh shit! <laughs> the priest, not, the priest, knocked someone up. He knocked someone up. <laughs> Do I hear like a like a collective "oh" as I realize that? <laughs> it's one of those full house moments. Oh! <laughs> and everybody hugs. <laughs> Theodore's pressing buttons on a box and it corresponds with the other What? Okay. <laughs> so, so, where do you go from there? Uh, I'm assuming we're going home, wherever that is. Alright, so Stanton's, going, so, Stanton's going to take Leary back to their home in the cathedral. And... If, unless anybody else has something that they want to do or get said or anything, this would be a good place to wrap up for the night. Stan is she always like this? Oh, some days are better than others. <laughs> what is this relationship built on? She is really good. Oh, no, I don't, I don't. And by that, I mean she knows how to tuck you in just right. It's like, <laughs> it's like magic. I don't know. It's a multi-call, so it always shows whoever's talking, and right now that's us. <laughs> she knows how to fluff the pillows just right. It's like, oh. That's really important in a relationship. I guess. The dragon gets it. Totally. That's <laughs> <laughs> is nodding. I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, I say we go to the bar. <laughs> And you get your first taste of real alcohol. She's not old yeah. enough. It's the, it's the fucking 14th century. No, it's the 14th century. Yeah, that means that she's there old enough. There are no legal ages. I am okay. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, we can pretty much wrap up there, and we can start next week's session on either her being in the middle of drinking or her waking up with a massive hangover, whichever sounds good to you all. I think in the middle of drinking, because Lucy is going to come in at some point and order a drink of her own free will, (gasps) without getting prompted by Theodora to do so. And I will come... And it's going to have a total of three shots in it. Yeah. (laughs) I will come prepared for the next plot point. But I will only bring up said plot point if any if the table seems to run dry on role play material for another in game day's worth. So like if we go around the table and everyone has nothing else to say or do, that's when the next plot point will be brought in. Okay. Good. Good. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Any questions or comments or anything about tonight's session or the future? Nope. Cool. And that that introduction was really nice. That was good. And and the the role play of uh, of the pregnancy reveal that that was that was that was cool. <laughs> that that's going Oops. to be that's yeah. going to be Stanton, that's going to be Stanton's reason for staying behind instead of my original idea. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Awesome. I mean, so he gets to stay behind in Sandpoint and safely raise a family. <laughs> Two months later, Stanton hung himself. Oh <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ, it just took a dark turn. Alright. <laughs> Wait, has the baby even come yet? Like, no. two months later. He, he knows. Oh, <laughs> man. She, she, she figured it out like, like two or three weeks ago, but I mean, it's possible. If she's very active, she may not have a regular period every month. True. So she may not know until, you know. Well, she's like a witch. Like four she's months later, like, she's probably she, not doing she might have had that by then. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, studying a bunch of, like, arcane rituals and, you know, having the guilt of having murdered three people on your mind, that's kind of stressful. I guess that counts as activity in a sense. <laughs> Well, stress can throw off your period, too. There so, you go. You know. So. There. <laughs> so, anyway. 
I just assume that stress affects everything. So. It really does. <laughs> You'd be surprised. So anyway, there's no experience points to divvy out tonight. You crap. We didn't <laughs> fight anybody. <laughs> I did a lot of fan of going to get like fifty points for like artwork. Or yeah. Something. Well, also <laughs> yeah. we could walking. still we could Lots still build walking. the tiki bar. Um, yeah. Or actually, actually, wait, I should. You guys are all still twelfth level, right? Yes. In I, keeping with the advancement track, well, next in keeping with the advancement track, next week everybody come at thirteenth level. Really? So that means I should make a tall at level thirteen. Yes, because. I'm not. It says the PCs should be 13th level when they begin the 5th book. Huh. I don't um, know how far off we are from 13. I don't think we're very far at all. Wait, did we get? Did we do experience for last session at all? Yeah, we did. But either way, everybody take an immediate boon to 13th level. Okay. Cool? Okay. Cool. Joe, you caught that? Yes, I did. Okay. All right. So, so that'll be um, 315,000 experience. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I was going to we say. We were that uh, far off. We were a little far off. I'm it's probably medium. Right now, 13. Um, fast track. No, we're right? medium. Medium track, yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, then you have 315,000. So, yeah, you all. I guess we were supposed to fight giants on the way out or something. <laughs> Well, but that's there, part of the book. Maybe it didn't come half of or something. There, well, we've also had more than four players that are splitting the experience. Well, oh, I've always we, split the experience by the one to three chart on the on the GM um, board. So the only thing I can notice is... Um, oh, are we done recording yet? Yeah, you can go ahead and stop.